Tesla's stock is down about 1% in after hours following Apple's disappointing earnings. Now, Apple is 11% of the weighting in the NASDAQ 100, and it's clearly having an effect on Tesla, on the NASDAQ, on other big tech stocks. Is tomorrow going to be a bloody day on Wall Street because of this? Well, not so fast. You're actually seeing bond yields and after hours falling on Apple's earnings. We're going to get big economic data coming out tomorrow as well, and there's a bigger picture going on here in our markets, and I want to give that to you in this video. On top of that, we're going to give you my expectations on what I expect from the economic data. Good, bad, sideways, how can we expect the markets to be tomorrow? Obviously, I'm not a fortune teller. These are my opinions, and this is, as always, not financial advice. We are, on top of that, going to get into your option activity for Tesla. It was, again, another back-to-back multi-billion dollar day for Tesla options. Are we bullish? Are we bearish? Where are people positioning their money for tomorrow and for next week? We'll get into that and all of the news you need to know on Tesla stock here this evening. If this sounds like something you want to be a part of, and if this sounds like your kind of video, hit that like button because it's free 99. Subscribe to the channel because the best prescription for your complication is a subscription to the channel. Hopefully that helps your portfolio make more money. And let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start with some of the option activity for Tesla. Then we're going to get into Tesla stock news. And then ultimately Apple and the data coming tomorrow and what that could do for our markets. So today Tesla had 881 hedge fund and institutional trades worth $1.74 billion with a positive order value of 29%. So it was pretty dang bearish today and what is notable is almost every day you're trading like one and a half to four billion dollars worth of tesla options that is not normal there's a lot of volatility and there's a lot of people positioning for you know 2024 and some people think 2024 is going to be bad I am in the camp of we're coming off of five percent 10-year treasury yields if 10-year treasury yields march their way down to maybe 4%, which I think is possible by the end of this year, that's probably going to fuel a rally. As the economic data recently has come in pretty strong, probably going to help fuel a rally. That's really supporting that soft landing narrative. Now, I'm not convinced that we're actually going to see a soft landing, that the data is going to kind of baseline out, that we're not going to get that downturn in the economy. So I'm not as bullish for 2024. But I think tactically, you wouldn't want to be bearish right now on, on equities. Heading from now until the end of the year, I don't have any trades on the market that are bearish. I don't have any puts on the, on the markets. I don't have any shorts on the market. I think it is way too soon to call for a recession. And I think it's uh, way too soon to be downside positioned in the markets following the Fed yesterday. The Fed was very dovish, as you can see today in the markets. And I think a little weakness in the economy is probably what we're going to get tomorrow. And that is going to support exactly what the Fed and market narrative is right now. And that is no more rate hikes and probably more rate cuts coming in 2024. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. Do not trade, invest, or you know, move your money around based on what I say. I'm not a financial advisor, and I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and get into all of your Tesla stock news. But first, congratulations to anyone in the trading community that took this trade on Fortinet with the $46 puts expiring next week. It looks like those are going to hit as long as the stock does not see a crazy bounce tomorrow, which looks unlikely given the guidance that we just seen. So those should hit pretty well. If you guys want to come trade with us, come get access to every time that I make a trade, the theory on why that trade is being made, and ultimately come talk to us. Come join a like-minded community of like-minded investors and or traders and hopefully help you make more money. Tesla increases the number of referral credits earned for demo drives to 500 from 100. As I have said previously, Ron Barron thinks Tesla can hit a $4 trillion market cap. That would put Tesla stock at roughly $1,250 per share. That would mean for every share of Tesla you own, you would make 
about $1,030 or so. Obviously, a vast majority of us think Tesla stock can go much higher than that, but that would still be like a 5x on your money if you're buying Tesla stock today. Here you can see in a new drone photo a scrapped Cybertruck body in Fremont. And as Sawyer Merritt points out, it's been almost one year since Tesla insurance expanded to a new U.S. state. I'm just wondering when it's going to actually come to Michigan. Currently, it covers about 41% of the U.S. population, but there is certainly more work to be done on this front in the US. And take a look at this, over $500 million worth of Tesla Mega Pack spotted at the Lathrop Mega Factory today. I mean, a huge amount of these suckers and I mean, we've seen Tesla Energy do very well recently and I'm sure this is a good sign for next quarter and even the coming quarter after that. The Biden administration is launching talks with solar energy companies and nonprofit groups in Puerto Rico on awards of up to $440 million for rooftop solar and battery storage systems in the Commonwealth. Here's this news that total money market fund assets rose by 62.68 billion to 5.7 trillion in the week ended November 1st. I want to point this out. This is another big catalyst for 2024, maybe even towards the end of this year. There is the lowest allocation to stocks you have ever seen in your investment lifetime today. There's no liquidity in our markets. Now that the situation seems to be getting better, rates are going to be going lower in 2024, it wouldn't surprise me if more money starts to flow into our markets. And imagine what happens then for Tesla and for really any other stock out there. Let's now discuss Apple earnings. This is causing the broader markets to sell off here in after hours, including Tesla to drop about 1%. Apple actually had pretty good earnings. They beat on EPS by a pretty good margin. Their gross margins came in better than expectations and their services came in about $1 billion higher than expectations. But this is what caused Apple stock to fall in after hours. Quote, Apple didn't give formal guidance, but CFO Luca Mastri said that Apple expected December quarter revenue to be similar to last year's revenue. However, Apple said that the December quarter this year will have one fewer week. Mastri said that Apple expected iPhone revenue to grow over last year, and analysts were looking for $122.98 billion in revenue for for the December quarter, which would be a return to year over year growth of about 5% in Apple's most important quarter. So Apple didn't give you official guidance, but the guidance they gave you, well, sounds like it missed analyst estimates. And Apple has now seen negative growth for a full year. This has not happened since 2001. Q1 2023, you were down almost 6%. Q2, you were down 2.5%. Q3, you were down 1.5%. And now for Q4, you're down 0.67% year over year. So this doesn't exactly look great on face value. Now for the broad markets, this is where things get a little bit tricky because Apple is such a large company. It's seen as a bellwether for the state of the economy in theory this is actually showing the economy is slowing down more than your analysts expected by apple giving you weak guidance for q4 this is probably going to have a positive effect on bringing yields lower so that's what I'm expecting from Apple earnings. This might actually cause 10, 20, 30 year treasury yields to fall a little bit tomorrow. So while this is bad news for Apple, it could have a good effect on the broader markets. Now, you're also going to get economic data coming out tomorrow. That is going to be the biggest driver 
of stocks. And tomorrow, you're actually going to get a lot of different data. So the unemployment rate comes out for Canada at 8.30 in the morning. At the same time, the non-farm payroll report for the U.S. also comes out at 8.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. You're expecting 180,000 job ads. Some estimates are as high as 190. Some are as low as about 160. Anywhere in that range is going to probably not give you the craziest move in either direction for our markets for bonds the big story is really bonds and what this data will do to the bonds now if you come in at like a hundred thousand job ads then you're probably going to get a pretty bullish reaction in yields you're probably going to see yields shoot lower thus meaning stocks move higher that would be a weakening labor market likely a weakening economy. That would mean the Fed definitely is not going to raise rates again. That's going to mean the Fed probably is going to have room to cut rates sooner than expectations. But let's say your non-farm payroll report comes in lower than 100,000. Then you're probably going to have some recession fears. And that would drop the bonds. That would obviously do the same thing as I just mentioned. But you're going to get some people that are going to start talking about a recession and ultimately a weakening economy is one thing. Less rate cuts or or more rate cuts, less rate hikes is one thing, but a recession is a totally different thing and that's not going to have a positive effect on our markets. So if the report comes in too bad, probably that's not great. If it comes in just lower than expectations, that's really good. If it comes in at like 300,000 again, that is probably pretty bad, and I would expect the markets to fall roughly around 1% in kind of coupling with Apple's disappointing uh, guidance in the mix there also. We are expecting the unemployment rate for October to come in at 3.8%. This would be the third month in a row with unemployment at 3.8%. It's the same thing here, kind of to the opposite though. If the unemployment rate comes in at like 4%, that's fine. Markets will like that. If it comes in at like 4.2% or some big jump higher, 4.3%, markets are going to have recession fears. That's probably not going to be the greatest thing for stocks tomorrow. If you come in at like 3.7%, probably not a big deal. If you were to fall big to like 3.5%, well, stocks might not like that as well. You really want to see us come in line with expectations as of right now, or maybe do a little bit better, but you don't want to see a big move really in either direction for this data. You're also going to get the U6 unemployment rate, manufacturing payrolls, government payrolls, average weekly hours, participation rate. Some of these could be important, again, if they come in much higher or much lower than expectations. It's all about what's the implied uh, kind of number, and then what does the number come in as? If everyone's expecting one thing and you get a crazy number in either direction, again, not going to be the greatest thing. Now, ISM services PMI is expected at 53. The lower, the better for this one. Services and housing, that's really the only place you've had inflation for like the past year. If services come down, that could be even more important than the BLS labor report. So that's a big one you also want to be watching. That comes out a little bit later at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. And if you take a look at this chart that I have pointed out plenty of times, we went into a technical correction on the S&P 500 last Friday. One week later, you tend to be positive about 66.7% of the time with an average return of about 1.5%. The following two weeks, three weeks, one month later, you tend to be negative about 2%. 40% of the time, you actually are positive. Now, three months later, six months later, one year later, tend to be more green. One year later, you're on average up 10.1%, 80% of the time. So... I think you have to be a buyer right now. And I think after the Fed yesterday, let's be honest, usually we're, we're used to seeing Fed rug pulls, like bearish rug pulls. We got a bullish rug pull yesterday, and I don't think that is going away anytime soon. So tactically, I think you have to be kind of bullish here, if not neutral. I do not have a single short on the markets besides Fortinet, the the trade that we played for earnings today and after hours that hopefully, I mean, it looks like it's going to do very well tomorrow. But other than that, 
I just don't think it's a good time to be buying puts going short in our markets. In 2024, once we start to see weakness in the economy, absolutely, that's going to be a better time. But you're going to get wrecked if you have shorts, in my personal opinion, on the markets from now until the end of the year, unless something drastic were to change and the data were to come in like really good or really bad, which I don't think is going to happen. You just want to be pretty dang careful here. And maybe another reason that could explain some of the selling we've seen in October, it's simple. Institutional clients tend to sell the most stock for tax loss harvesting in October. Private clients, a lot of your retail investors, tend to sell the most stock for tax loss harvesting in December. A lot of institutional clients do this so they can actually buy the end of the year. They can buy the December rally. They can buy the January, you know, first start to a new year tends to be pretty positive. But that retail selling is usually pretty large. So we'll see what happens. But from here on out, you're probably not going to see as much institutional selling. And this year is probably going to be a lot lower than some of the other years just because the allocation to stocks is so so low right now. And again, like I said previously, that's probably a reason why stocks can bounce here. You've seen a lot of selling. There isn't a lot of positioning in stocks. As you look forward to 2024, as long as we don't get a crazy deep recession, I think stocks are going to do very well. If we go into like an 08 again, which I, I, I don't see the path forward for that, then stocks are not going to do well. But if we just have a slowdown, we're plus, we're minus on GDP, it's it's not, we're not really growing, we're slightly negative, kind of like what we've seen in 2022, I think stocks are going to do very well with the backdrop that Fed funds rates are going to fall probably a lot. A new AI investor sentiment survey is out and you can see you are almost at your one year high bearishness. And this was the one year high back December 21st, 2022, your one year bearish high was 52.3%. This latest survey as of November 1st, released today, was 50.3% bearish. You're like 2% off of your, your highest level of, of bearish sentiment in our markets. 25.4% of investors are neutral, which that's kind of how I consider myself right now in the short term, tactically bullish. Um, which, I mean, you, you kind of need to be bullish tactically in the short term when so many people are bearish. You, you usually don't want to follow uh, the masses there. And then, like I said, 24.3% are bullish. This is the lowest just percentage of, of people bullish in a in a long time. I mean, the historical average is 37.5% of investors being bullish. Uh, bullish. This is even lower than your week of October 25th, which I find pretty interesting given stocks have bounced a decent amount since then. So that is going to do it for this video. Some of my thoughts heading into tomorrow. Let me know what you guys think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Are you neutral? How are you feeling about the markets right now. And again, if I have to say it again, I will. I'm tactically bullish. I'm tactically bullish on Tesla. I think buying Tesla at these prices long term is a fantastic idea, in my personal opinion. Could we go lower once we start to go into a recession? Obviously. The first rate cut is when stocks tend to actually sell off. Right now, you're just kind of prepping for lower rates. I, I, I don't think you're at that point where it's a crisis in the economy and we're going into a recession. You're just not there yet, in my personal opinion. So I think you have some time to kill before you do see any larger downside. And right now, I'm tactically bullish. I'm not going too crazy with, with any call positions. I'm not going crazy with any puts. I, I really don't have that much positioning at all besides my long-term stocks on this market. I really want to save a lot of cash right now. Cash, I think, is going to be your best friend at some point in 2024. That's just my personal opinion. That's how it's looking like to me. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want to take it a step further and come trade earnings trades like Fortinet with us and many more. Link down below in the description of this video. Come join us. Uh, you can come talk to myself. Come ask me questions. Come ask other people questions. Uh, come learn how to trade if that's something you're interested in. Whether you're interested in passive income strategies, whether you're interested in, in spreads or you know, even some YOLOs in there. Who knows? Whatever you're interested in. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic place to be. 
uh, to join a community like that. Nonetheless, guys, my name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.